I have a bad sickness. I don't know what's the name of it. Servus and welcome back. Everything is clean and we can go ahead with assembling the carburetor. I show you one and the others are the same. And we start with the main jet. Tighten it, but not much. This one goes in here. Again, use the right sides of screwdriver and tighten it just a little bit. Here we go, put everything on this needle, like so. First the spring, washer and o-ring. Like that. Screw all the way in, but don't tighten it, that one at all, it will destroy the needle. Just screw it all the way in to the bottom and take it out one and a half turns, in my case. Okay, it's in and half, one, one and a half turns. What's left? This one. So we mount that needle on here. I use a um, set of pliers, like so. This little bracket goes over this. And now we can push it in here. Make sure the needle fits in that brass thing, and I think. This one is not adjusted correctly because usually when you feel the needle is bottomed out those two lines should be parallel. But in this case the float level is too high, I think. But I gotta check the manual or read read the internet because maybe it's different here. Always check the manual for this. Now the bottom is done, I will mount that one later on when I know how the floater sh should be adjusted. And I'll mount the other ones. The floater is adjusted, but how is it done? This is the needle. And even when it's bottomed out, I can still move that floater a little bit because the pin in there is spring loaded as I said. And it's important that without compressing the spring this line and the floater line should be parallel like that and you can adjust it with this sheet metal right here with moving it up or down you can adjust the level so this one is still too low I'm gonna adjust this sheet metal here push it down a bit until it's straight and these covers can go back on. I reused all seals and everything, but I'll check on the bench if it's leaking or not because, you know, I don't want to find it out when everything is reinstalled on the machine and then I have to take it apart again. That's why I'm gonna do it on the bench. I'll use a little bit of grease on these screws because they were stuck pretty badly and I don't want to have that again. Just a little bit. Makes life easier next time. What's left on the bottom? Right. The idling screw. So I'm gonna turn this all the way in and turn it out six and a half turns. Good, we can go ahead with the needles and membranes. And the needles must be checked on marks here, but that's good, and they need to be clean, but that's good as well. So just push them in. Position that one, put in the spring and the cover. Here we got the mounting direction, this one needs to fit on that hole. Never use any force on these 
kind of things. Everything needs to go smooth and easy. And as I said earlier before, to check the thing for leaks, we're gonna fill it up with gas here on the bench, on the rise, and let it sit overnight. Just gonna do it like this and prepare the side wrench gas tank for me. Testing setup is set up and let's hope that no fuel comes out nowhere where it shouldn't be or should come out. Let's see. Now all the fuel bolts down here fill up. Okay, now all carburetors are filled and what I want to check is if fuel comes out somewhere here or somewhere here where the rubber seal is and I think I'm gonna let it sit until tomorrow and then I can see how much yeah how much is left some of the fuel will evaporate that's no problem but it should stay within 10 or 20 milliliters and for now it looks good while the carburetors are doing the leaking test and this is easy to reach now, we can replace the brake fluid of the rear brake. Look at that. Brake fluid or honey. Hmm. We better pull that out with the syringe. Fill it up with fresh black brake fluid. And we're gonna flush the system with the new fluid. A lot of air bubbles coming out. Pressure point is much better already. That's no surprise. And we're gonna do it until fresh fluid comes out of here. And the last step is to flush the system until the level is between lower and upper. So I go ahead until it's in the middle between the two of them. And then we check the pressure point. It's much better. And that's good. Don't tighten it too hard. It's just this rubber seal, nothing else. The leak test was okay, I drained the fuel already after one day of testing. No visible leaks here, so everything was fine. Now, these carburetors can go back to the bike, but before we do that, I gotta tell you something really bad. I have a bad sickness. I don't know what's the name of it, but... When there's the opportunity to buy a bike cheap, I just have to do it. I can't help. This 650 Husaberg has engine problems, it's eating water, yeah, and I just bought it, but I am running out of space here. Before putting it actually in, we better mount these because otherwise we can't reach that at all. It's a lot of fiddling, like this as well, but when it's mounted in, no chance. Okay, this was the puller, and this one pulls it back. Now it goes in. This is not easy. It went out pretty tough and it goes in pretty tough. Okay, one side is in. <sighs> now it sits and we go ahead with closing these clamps. Never over tighten these. Just close it until you get a good resistance. That's enough. You just, if you close it too much, you just squeeze that rubber too much. It's not necessary. 
just needs to hold it a little bit, not much. That's enough. Now we'll go ahead with the airbox. Oh yeah. Close these clamps as well. Of course all four of them. Don't forget one. Just tighten them all. What's missing now? Just the throttle position sensor. Plug. Just plug it in. And this breather. Just goes on. And now we mount that choke puller. For the choke, we just mount this thing in there. I can do it with the camera in one hand and just hang it in. It's pretty easy. After connecting everything, check if it's operating correctly. Pull the choke. The choke gets pulled. If I open the throttle, it goes back by itself and it operates the throttle. So everything is alright. We want a well running bike, so we mount a new air filter. Just push that one in and mount the cover on top. This cover is only held by two clips and these two screws, that's all. Now for testing, I'm using my special gas tank again. As in all of the videos when trying the machine without the gas tank. So I'm around this, fill in fresh oil and then we can start it up. This is pretty exciting for me because I don't even know if this engine turns over. I haven't tried anything on it. I didn't even turn it over, you know. So with new battery, let's see. About 3 liters of fresh 10W40. New battery. Some fresh fuel. I really hope that it jumps. Let's see. Thank you for watching and please let me know what I could do better in my videos. Thanks.